Yeah. Always wet your wood before you put your lime sofa on. Yeah. It helps the wood, the, the slime sofa to adhere, as a posh word, to the wood. To adhere. If you want to see another video on privet, um, for a bit more refinement and structure, on YouTube, if you type in Mauro Stemberger Ligustrum, he does a very, very good demonstration on a privet and a repot, which you'll see a lovely blue pot, uh, which I think suits the tree fantastically. Um, is that the privet he got off you? It is the privet he got off me. Not that I'm dropping any names, but um, <laughs> it's a very, very good video. Uh, and it's there for anybody to watch and it's again it's a little bit further advanced than what this tree is at the moment and it's coming out to be a very very beautiful tree and it's a cracking video it is a good video he's very knowledgeable he's a very very good artist is mr stenberger i'll just explain you've got some nice trees on your own i've got a few um, <laughs> we're getting there you're yeah. always in that no one under boot mine well I like, the, I like to take a tree to the trophy because it's nice to go to the show and have a tree in the show. It's, we go to Belgium, why not take a tree? But like I say, because of this COVID crap now, nobody knows what's going to happen with it. Whether it's going to cost us too much money to take a tree or whether we're going to need to get too many, well, they're talking about licenses or certificates for health and hygiene. Passports, aren't they? It's like a passport, so nobody knows at the moment what it's going to cost or what it's going to take. So I'm hoping because we like to put a tree in the show. There's some nice trees. Um, but we'll get there one year. We'll still go to the show without the tree. Everybody's all the lads who go normally with from England. They're all still talking about going to the show. It's just them that like to put trees in the show are a little bit more disappointed because. Like I say, why, why go abroad when if you've got a nice tree to show it off, that's the place to show it off. It's, we're not going to win, I don't think. <laughs> but um, it's just nice to take part. It's nice to know you've got a tree good enough to get qualified into the show. And, it's, and like I say, it's a fantastic show. Um, if I remember rightly, there was over, I think, 85 traders at the last show. So you've got a selection of everything, wire, composts, pots, trees material is trees finished from japan imported is trees raw material from all over england all over europe all over you know spain italy there's some amazing stuff to buy you just need a big a big pocket plenty of cash <laughs> and a way to go back but you walk into the show and you walk into the showroom where the trees are and if you haven't seen bonsai at its best it's just this show blows your mind basically it's really really I think possibly the best show in Europe. There's only another show that maybe would touch it. It's probably the Sally the Sally U show in France, um, which unfortunately I've never had a chance to go to. Purely financial reasons, I can only go to one or the other. And Belgium did a lot easier to get them, so I prefer Belgium, which is unfortunate. But and the France show for me is at the wrong time of the year. It's getting towards Christmas. It's getting towards the autumn, and my work starts to get very very busy by then. Um, and I've always got a lot of things to do by then, so that's another reason why I could never go to that show. But one day, maybe it's when I get retired, you never know. You might say he's in France. I might come with her. Right. How are we getting there? Wait, wait, that's big now. I'm going to slap a bit of wire on now. Um, give it a little bit of shape and direction. It shouldn't take long. Never pour that back into your bottle. No, use it on something else outside before you waste it. Got a coat one fly. That'll do for now, eh? What do you say? I'm putting probably up a heavier wire than necessary, but what I'm also doing is I'm putting it on pretty slack. I'm not worrying about branch placement for the smaller branches. All I'm worrying about is directional placement for the main branches because as they grow they're going to thicken and obviously as they grow they're going to get twiggier at the back and they're going to get more twig and all the front stuff that's long eventually is going to be cut away so I ain't worried at all about the shape of the tree it's not going to look like a bonsai it's going to look like a, 
a tray with direction. Um, you'll understand when I say, uh, like I say there's, there's, there's ends here where I could wire and make it repaired, but what's the point? Knowing in the future when all this wood's back, it's going to be cut off. All I want is this part here, putting to where it should be for when it grows at a later date. And that's basically the principle of wiring a piece of warm, raw material. If you've got raw material that's got fine stuff that's going to be closer into the trunk, then yes, by all means, wire close in um, and wire your twig because then you're going to be able to put some detail in. But as is, as this is, it doesn't need all that detail. So there's no point in doing it. Is it on? Will it be copyright? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> when you do, when you put something on, it's terrible, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm going to take this, take that round there. I'm going to take that round there. Round that gin, so I can stop it sliding. Oh, I'll get it on there. This is the one I don't want to snap. This is the one we have to put a bit of tape on. Put a bit of tape on. If it dies, it will not be very gross anymore. For now, it will work. I think it will work. So Ryan assures me he's not going to sell this tree um, until the time's right, <laughs> and we uh, see. Uh, well, it's done. And we see another. Yeah. We've got plenty of the gun, haven't we? We have, we have lots, <laughs> lots and lots. Mm. What's your next drop down from this? Uh, 3.5. Have you got a three? No, you haven't got a three, have you? Two and a half, maybe? Three and a half, uh, two and a half, I'll put that. So what you been working on lately then Rob? The house. <laughs> <laughs> I've been very busy putting a fit of, putting a new kitchen in and revamping the house basically tree wise um not a lot at the moment the next couple of weeks i'll be starting to work on a few bits and pieces 
I have a couple of commissions where I have to work on wood and my own trees because of COVID last year I was on a year's fur I had a year's furlough nearly and I got an awful lot of trees worked on the only problem is you have to do the bit that I hate just take the wire off <laughs> <laughs> I've explained that in the video to the worst part isn't it? oh that's uh, don't get us wrong therapeutically I love putting wire on I can sit for hours just wiring a tree and put it into place but when it comes to taking it off, oh dear. Soul destroying, isn't it? It is, but it has to be done. It's the part of the tree. You don't want to damage your tree. So you've got to take the wire off, especially with a deciduous tree. Sometimes a conifer like a pine or, or whatever, you can get away with because obviously it's an evergreen. You can't see the damage you do. But um, deciduous, you must keep an eye on biting in and scarring because especially on the likes of maple and stuff like that you get a bit of damage on the maple and it's it's very hard to rectify it's it's a long long time in growing something out it's just not good you just have to be very careful and i have a couple of trays that has to be dy within the next three or four weeks which i'm going to try Start and go, and then I've got some work to do. Um, me two better use why well, one more arm material than the other. They're going to need day wiring. I've got a few bits and pieces that need the wire off. But I've got a project I acquired a Bovrenensis Scots pine a few years ago, which I've had in a pot for a few years, getting used to a shallower pot or a shallow container. It's a big tree. It's going to be shortened in size. I already see a design in the tree. That's ready to work on. And hopefully through the winter, it'll get its chance. With a bit of luck, I might be able to put a few photos on Facebook. Um, and show people where it is. Do, do, do. If you unsure, double it up. Yeah, I try not to normally, but I didn't want to put the real thick one on. I've realised I needed the thick one, but never mind. <coughs> Such is life. right in the centre, coming from nowhere, which I'm not going to need. Bye bye baby. <laughs> Whoops, a daisy.
but privet it's a tree that's very forgiving you can make a mistake um it's a good it's a good i would say a good beginner's tree good tree to learn with you can make mistakes and if anything goes wrong generally you can you can give it a couple of years to regrow and it'll, it'll regrow hard to kill on um well they are yeah but they make lovely trees they do make very nice very nice trees mm. when you're re-putting all you can take a tiny bit of the roots off can you you can quite a bit Did you have a workshop last week, though? Um, did I have a workshop last week? Yes, I believe I did. Um, I, I, the way things are with the COVID, we'd, we're, like I say, we're back into the hall now where we run our workshops from. I also normally run workshops from home, um, but obviously me, me own workshop at home only generally has five, six people in, but it's too small to get six people in at the moment. So instead of doing one workshop from the hall, I'm doing two. Um, so everybody gets to go basically if they want to go they generally all my workshops are on a sunday because it's the only real day i can guarantee getting off work uh, i'm in a situation now where i do get a day off during the week so possibly in the future if anybody was interested there could be one-on-one -on -one workshops available with the right sort of planning um, but apart from that, I mainly work on work on my own basic workshops at the hall. Um, the only good thing about coming to a workshop at my home, you get to get a good walk around my trees where the one at the hall. None of my trees are there, unless I take something specific down to show somebody. But. Join the club or come on the site and you can get all this kind of information if you ask the right questions. Um, Which you can find on Facebook. Facebook. Or my own website is Robert Atkinson. Or Rob Atkinson. I think it's Robert Atkinson. What, your Facebook one? Your private Facebook one. Ah, right? oh, it's Robert Atkinson. Yeah. Um, what's the white cuts? What are they? So it's... But we have a lovely club. We have some, like I said, like Ryan says... We've got some great lads. Um, we all get on well. We all have a very, very strong passion for bonsai, which I think is what makes the club so good. And um, when everybody wants to do bonsai, um, it's not about uh, what if or what if. We try to create some nice trees, and over the years we have acquired some very, very, very nice trees in our club. I don't know how to do this one. I've got a bit of a problem. Um, I've got two branches very, very the same thickness. One, the thinner ones don't need a thick wire. So I'm going to have to anchor off to a, a gin. And get one. I think I'll have to go under the gin on both of them, Ryan, to be honest with you. So I'm not damaging a branch with too heavy a wire. Yeah. One. 
Jim Cones. Keep your heart. Tongue on the way. Mm. No, I want to put that one up there. That's a thinner branch. <laughs> it's so quiet. He wants a tub. <laughs> so he wants. Uh, oh Tell me not to choke. <laughs> Bad habit. She says, I didn't come in. He says, I'm not coming in there. <laughs> <laughs> So here we go, um, a bit of shaping. And this is where the magic happens. No, it's not. You're not going to get a finished tray today. You're going to get. You're going to get a basic image. I'm going to lift it a little bit. It's just to, oh, we've got a wedge. Look. There you go. Just to give us a little bit of height, the front. Try and give you an idea of where I think the tree should be. And it's finished design. So what's your best species of bonsai, Rob? My most favourite species? Well, I've always said pines, Scots pines particularly. But, there's a but. <laughs> <laughs> the last few years, well, I, I've had a year for a long, long time. It actually belonged to a friend years ago and I saved its life and it's been in my garden ever since. And through the course of the years, I've ended up We've probably said it was our tree, but I ended up buying him out of his share and um, being offered quite a few quid for this tree. Um, and it's a ewe. But I also acquired a, a ewe from a place where I used to work on a trading estate. Um, found it in the ground. I thought I'd found a multi trunk. And when I actually got the tree out, it took a long time, about five hours. But when I actually found it, got the tree out of the ground, it's got a trunk as well. Thick as the top of my leg, basically, um, and it's got an amazing bend and twisting, which you don't normally get in Texas. It's got a lovely twist, 
and over the years the last i would say six to seven years i've developed the tree it got a real major style and for the first time last year when i started the lockdown and it's becoming to look like a very 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 nice tree so knowing what i know now about taxes it's becoming one of my most favorite trees but i think deep down i do favor scott's pine to be honest but certainly won't rule out taxes I like junipers, but I think junipers are very, very hard work and you've got to really give them attention and time. Um, you've got to be meticulous with junipers, I think. Uh, but yeah, Scott's Pine, I love blue cedar, but you don't see many. Um, I had, I have two, I have one, well I had two. Um, I've actually sold, I had one in a trophy in 2020. Um, which now is in somebody else's hands um, because I have another one which hopefully is going to be just as nice if not nicer um, I was asked if I would sell the tree so I sold the tree um, oh. um, but the beauty about the tree and the person I've sold it to is I get to do all the work still on the tree which is a very very good thing um, yeah you can't keep everything um, I try to find a, a, a tree what I really really like and, and try and keep it and make it into a, a refined specimen and I only really sell a tree that's of a good very very high quality or what I would see as me, part of my true collection I only really sell it if I think I've got something that's better going to come along. Um, it's like everything. Um, I've got that many trees, I can't keep everything. So there's times when to subsidize the hobby and to pay for these trips abroad to Belgium and places like that, you sometimes have to do this kind of thing. Um, I'm certainly not in for the money or the profit, but it, it helps, don't get us wrong. It helps, it helps like I say, subsidize the hobby but um buys an extra raw material it does or I, or I like the, the thing is i like to collect my own raw material but with this light and pines and certain trees i can't always get in england what i want so i have a few contacts now abroad but like i say this brexit things spoiling a few things I have got a couple of contacts now abroad in Europe, which hopefully I'm going to do a little bit of negotiation with to get some better materials for what I want. And obviously some of the things in England, what they can't get, I'll be supplying them, hopefully, which is all in the plan. It's generally privets and hawthorns, isn't it? Privets and hawthorns is generally what you can't get. And we can't get the likes of Sabina or really, really twisty old and gnarled Scots pine, which is what we're looking for, really. <laughs> um, Especially from the Italian Alps, huh? Well, more than likely, yeah. But I can't get. Yews are very hard to find. Um, Oopsie daisy, there's a break. I actually don't need the break. I don't need it. Um, I really don't need it. So there we go, there's another decision made. I'll leave a stump just in case. See it's got the anchor wire on so I'm not going to cut it off immediately. But like I say, a favourite species, yeah, I think probably Scots Pine. Larch is good, I like. Larch, hmm? larch is good. I like larch, um, especially in our climate, but... <laughs> I'm not being funny, you can get amazing larch from Europe 
that's probably better than what we can get in England. Very hard to find old bark in England. Um, where again, in the likes of the Alps and places like this, um, they find amazing trees. Again, I've got another one that's surplus to requirements. So, off with his head. Like I say, I'm leaving the stumps because the, the anchor branches, and if they produce buds and grow for a year, a year or so, well, I might get to a stage where it might get used as a branch. Like I say, I'm trying to leave most of the length on the branches, taking some of the tips off, um, because I want thickening further back. So the tree is not going to look like a finished tree, but it's, all it's getting is its main direction, putting into it. Branch of brook <laughs> <laughs> to bend this without bend it, it snapping. Bend it on the wire. <laughs> I'm trying. If it breaks, it's your fault, right? It's not my fault, it's Ryan's fault. It's a team yeah. effort. This is what it is. Such is life. It lives, it lives. It'll live. There's no break in there. It's in the right direction. It'll heal. It will heal. <laughs> Every faith in it, man. Have we? Yeah. I certainly have. It's a technique on bending and rub. Bend the wheel. Careful. <laughs> <laughs> Try and hold the wire as you're bending and so it you stabilize and you bend. Don't just hold it with one hand and just go like that and it'll snap. <clears throat> you just bend it carefully. That's why I put it. These wires have probably got a heavier than what they actually need. Um but it's a means to an end at the moment. That's all it is, like I say, it is it's directional for the time being till everything thickens. The apex is going to be the one thing that needs thickening most. So once it gets its basic shape set, it'll be a case of letting the apex really, really romp away for a few years. But for the next year or so while the wire is holding the branches in place. Like I say, I'm not going to cut the length back just for the, the demonstration purposes because it's, that's not what I need in the tree. I need the tree to lengthen to thicken the inner thickness of the branches. Um, so basically it's it's more or less at its next stage. Um, I'm going to spin it round so as you can see it a little bit better. 
there's like I say, there's no detail in the dead wood, just slight marks. It's just basically what we call block carbon. The detail will come in after a bit of weathering and then a bit more burning and a bit more texture. But with it being privet, the dead wood will start and rot, so you'll be able to put texture in just with a bit of wire brush or a nice little hand carving graining tool, um, which is probably the best way to carve, to be honest with you. Machines are used for block carving to create hollows. The real good detailed carving is done by a hand tool uh, and, and nature, basically, by weathering and crackling and splitting. And... So basically we've got roughly, that's where our design de define roughly the front of the tree. The, the apex, like I say, is going after thicken a lot, but it will get there over time. Um, you've got a lovely base at the front. I've, t I've angled it back a bit. Doesn't need to be repotted yet. Maybe it's two years down the line. Um, after this next year, after following years growth, maybe it's repotted. Um, unless it's been in here quite a while. I think it's only two years, isn't it? Two years, I think, yeah. Some people are, say you should repot repot every year because they grow that fast. It's probably It could probably be possible. Um, but like I say, at the moment, it just has to let everything grow. Maybe it's next year, after a bit more length, we might think about cutting a bit more back. Um, especially if things are thickening up and if the wire's got to come off. If things don't stay next year, we'll put a bit more wire on the heavier branches to hold them into place. And obviously over the next course of the year, you're going to get, we have pulled things down. We're going to start getting budding in where the light can get to. Um, so that's going to help. So, privet, Ligistrum over Florium. I hope you've enjoyed the, uh, the demonstration. It's nice to be invited by Ryan to do this kind of thing, to teach people how to do things. If you are interested in the Bonsai Club, Akamatsu Club is the third, the, Fifth. the first Thursday of every month at Seaton Community Centre. That's in Seaton County, Durham. Anybody's welcome. We start round about half seven. Um, and if you live in the North East and you want to learn a bit about Bonsai, get yourself along. Thank you very much. They can hit you up on Facebook and all, can't they? Akamatsu. They can, they can hit Akamatsu on. We have a site on Facebook at Akamatsu School of Bonsai. Um, most details are put on there for when there's club events and who's talking. We don't have outside speakers. It's something we don't believe in. We like to do internal work. So most of the talks in our club are done by our own members. Um, it's all about trees that they like to work on or they like to talk about their collections and what they've done. Um, they can be very, very good nights, but we do base a lot of the, the, the nights around workshops and creating bonsai. Thank you very much. So, that's a demonstration of Robert, Bonsai Bobby. I'd you. like to appreciate it for coming down. Thank you, mate. So, if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't, please subscribe. See you later. Bye. Right, folks, that's it for part two of this video. With the privet carving and basic styling just starting to slice as a bonsai i hope you're enjoying it a big special thanks to robert atkinson for doing this from the akamatsu school of bonsai if you want to check them out please have a look on facebook for akamatsu school of bonsai please give it a thumbs up and if you haven't please subscribe so we'll catch you in the next one Ta -da.